Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're going to continue with our mini-series looking at all the ships which are available to buy for Alpha UEC in the, in the verse as it currently stands. Uh, so we're only looking at those ships sort of to buy in-game um, and what they currently cost sort of in in-game currency. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about sort of my opinions on ships to buy for real world, you know, dollars, euros, yen. Um, although I might make the occasional sort of offhand comment about whether or not I think one stacks up sort of in terms of a, uh, a real buy value. Just in case you missed the first one, this is part two of the series. Uh, so we're going to take a look at all the ships which cost between 1 million and 3.5 million credits. There's uh, In part one, we look at all the ones which are below a million. And then part three is going to come in just a couple of days once I've got it all edited. And that will cover off everything which is over 3.5 million credits. Um, I've just done it like this so that it's a bit easier to sort of jump to the uh, the ships that you want to look at. And maybe sort of if you're looking with a particular price range in mind, uh, you'll be able to sort of identify one video out of the three to focus on. Uh, otherwise the whole thing would end up running to an hour and be a, a total mess. Just before we get going, I also want to just say thank you again to Anori for the awesome backing music she's provided me with. Um, and we will, sort of, as soon as she's got her online presence all set up, we'll have links to all of her stuff in the video description down below. These videos would have been absolutely impossible to make without the help of the people in Frontier Consolidated. Uh, so that's just our community, uh, we hang out over on Discord, and you'll find a link to that in the uh, video description down below. So if you fancy going and saying hello, then, uh, then please do. So certainly when you're looking at new ships to buy and stuff, just remember that, you know, People out and about in the verse can uh, can always sort of pull you out a ship to lend it to you, um, as many people did, so that I could film these. So uh, so don't be afraid to sort of ask people either in chat or uh, or come and say hi on Discord, and we'll sort you out with some. Uh, final piece of housekeeping before we we crack on with it is uh, if you are sort of a new player watching these videos just to see if you like the look of Star Citizen. Um, then just consider using someone's referral code if you do set up an account. I'll flash mine up on screen, but sort of as I've said before, the important thing is that you use somebody's uh, just because it gets you a bit of extra starting cash. Just quickly, if you did skip the first video, uh, there's three locations in Stanton where you can purchase ships. So we have Astra Armada, which is at Area 18 on Art Corp. Um, and this one I'll be abbreviating to AA in the, uh, the slides which come with the uh, ships. Then at Lawville on Hurston, we've got New Deal, which is located actually in Tisa Spaceport. Uh, so just before you sort of head into the city on the, the trams, uh, this one will abbreviate to ND. And finally, we've got the Crusader Industries showroom, which is at the Cloudview Center on Horizon. Uh, so this one will, will call CIS. So, picking back up where we left off, we have the Avenger Warlock at 1.5 million. This is the final ship in the Avenger series. So this one's got the same chassis as the, the other variants, uh, but it's got an EMP in the boot for taking down shields and disabling ships. It's a favourite of the pirate crowd, and I've seen a few of these too close for my liking in the past. At 1.17 million, we've got the Aegis Gladius, which is among the S-tier fighters of recent times. It's an agile light fighter that comes stock with three size 3 weapons and two size 1 shields make it a bit more hardy than its main rival, the Arrow. There are a couple of other variants of the Gladius, uh, but they are not for sale in games, so things like the, uh, the Aegis Pirate Edition or the Aegis Valiant uh, won't be covered in this guide. But the Gladius is also one of the ships to have its gold standard complete, so you have some really nice cockpit animations for the startup sequence, uh, well worth a look. A bit of an odd one, the Drake Herald will set you back 1.18 million. Its main focus is data running, which isn't currently a loop in game. But the general idea that you would be taking sensitive data from point A to point B and relying on the fact that you're strapped to a giant engine to keep you from getting caught and intercepted by anyone along the way. Pure Drake, with relatively little in the way of safety features, your main safety feature is probably not getting caught. At nearly 1.2 million, the Origin M50 has been one of my favourite ships of recent times. I just think it looks incredibly cool and it's pretty wild to fly, particularly low across the moons of the system. It's a pure racer, 
And it's also great to take out in Arena Commander's race mode, so go and rag this around the Murray Cup track if you uh, think you can handle it. And with the capacitor changes in 314, turreted ships have had a big boost to their capability, and as such the Anvil Hurricane is looking like a bit of a steal at just north of 1.2 million. You'll need a buddy to get the most out of the ship since you have two size 4s under pilot control and four size 3s on a player control turret. Crewed up this thing can seriously shred though, so it can be worth it even when you're splitting those bounty payouts. The RSI Mantis is another odd duck for just over 1.2 million. It's a quantum interdiction ship, so it has a snare built into it which not only has some sweet visual effects but also allows you to pull another ship out of quantum travel, and the quantum dampener will prevent them from running away. It's another favourite of pirates who use them to lay traps for wary miners, uh, but also PvP bounty crews who want to make sure their target can't just warp away at the first sign of a real fight. Approaching 1.3 million is the Anvil Hawk. In law, Anvil is primarily a military contractor making ships for the UEE Navy, but the Hawk represents their first foray into the private bounty hunter market. It's basically dripping with guns, with four size 2s and two size 1s, all under pilot control. The ship also has a pod on the back which allows you to take one prisoner alive when bounty hunting moves on to its next iteration, and demands that we capture rather than kill criminals. At nearly 1.4 million we start the Drake Cutlass series with the venerable Cutty Black. And for a lot of us the Cutlass Black was our first taste of multi-crew gameplay, with space inside for a pilot, co-pilot and a turret gunner. You also have six drop seats in the back for taking extra mates. And the Cutty Black is a jack of all trades, with 46 SCU of cargo you can do a bit of hauling, you can fit a rock mining vehicle in the back if you want to try out some mining, and with four size threes for the pilot and two size threes on the turret it can handle itself pretty well in a fight. All of the Cutlass series have these giant VTOL engines on the back, so they handle very nice planet side or moon side, and they're quite forgiving to fly in Atmo. Drawbacks though, you've only got two beds despite your capacity for extra crew and you've got very limited onboard facilities. So while the Cutlass Black is a jack of all trades, its sister ships in the series are much more niche. So the red is the ambulance of the SC universe, exchanging the cargo hold for a med bay. The beds are only tier 3, so they won't treat serious injuries, but they should be enough to patch up grazed knees and elbows. And you can use this to get a patient stabilised and then onto some proper med facilities. Sticking with the emergency theme, the blue is the squad car for bounty hunters and militias. It has a quantum dampener to stop criminals getting away, and it's also got a total of 12 prisoner pods for any bad guys that you capture alive uh, once this mechanic is added to the game. Sticking with Drake for the time being, 1.4 million will get you in the seat of a buccaneer. This ship is a glass cannon of a light fighter, with a size 4, two size 3s and two size 1 weapon hardpoints. So as a Drake ship again, safety features are lacking, uh, but in this case you have to rely on blowing enemies up before they can fire back at you. The Hornet series begins with the F7C at just shy of 1.5 million. Hornets are the main fighters of the UE Navy, and every ship in the series shares the same style of chassis but with different equipment for its different role. So important to note that the circular module in the centre can be exchanged for a variety of turret or even cargo options, so you can basically customise your Hornet however you like regardless of which one you buy. And the Ghost is the stealth variant with its black finish and a bunch of stealth components as stock. So again, just to bear in mind that you could exchange the parts of the cheaper F7C and still build just as stealthy a fighter. But having said that, I do like my stealth fighters to have black paint jobs.
and the F7CR Hornet Tracker is the military pathfinder or scout variant of the Hornet series and will set you back just over 1.8 million. It's meant to have enhanced scanning capabilities but this is currently lacking from this iteration of the game. You'll probably have a tangible difference further down the line, uh, but right now, once again, you're just paying for the paint job. And the F7CM Super Hornet is the all-out military variant. So this will come stock with the turret module and varies slightly from its sisters in the lineup in that it has a co-pilot gunner seat. The turret can also be used solo on all of the Hornets as it slaves to pilot control when no co-pilot is present. Meta-wise, the Hornet turret is weaker than most uh, because it shares its capacitor with the ship's other weaponry. The fourth and final ship of the Origin 300 series is the 350R Racing variant. Racing's actually something I've been enjoying a lot recently, um, and I'm really hoping that before too long we get the racetracks around Grim Hex open. You know, I'm looking forward to crashing into asteroids then having a beer with my Orc mates. The base MISC Freelancer will set you back just under 1.7 million, and for a lot of people it's the main competitor to Drake's Cutlass Black. It really suits a group of four friends, and unlike the Cutlass it has beds for all of you if you want to head off on an adventure and log out while you're part way there. And with 66 SCU of cargo space I've always thought of the Freelancer as the space van of the SCU universe, perfect for a budding trading crew to start out in. Personally, I'm more into the Cutlass as a multi-crew starter, as I find it a bit more versatile and I like the VTOL thrusters. Uh, but to quote one of my favourite Scottish phrases, you do you, pal. The MISC Freelancer Dur is the exploration variant, and on the back you can see the additional fuel tanks which enable you to travel longer distances. So this is probably an entry level exploration ship, still with enough room to take your crew and a bit of the stuff that you find. But if trade is more your thing, then the MAX is one of my top recommendations still. For 2.2 million you get 120 SCU of cargo space thanks to the widened rear section, and it makes a perfect first hauler for traders and miners. And finally in the series is the MISC Freelancer MISS, which sacrifices internal space for a boatload of missiles, 28 size 3 missiles to be exact. So if you want to give your trigger finger a rest, don't overlook this ship, because that is a pretty huge compliment for its size and price. Sticking with MISC for the time being, we have the Razor series, starting out with the base version at 1.76 million. It's a sleek racing ship, and while it's not my favourite of the racing ships, I do like the styling with the ads on the paintwork reminding me of our F1 cars. The LX variant is classed as a luxury ship, but from what I can tell the only difference is a bit of a plusher seat and a white paint job. So if that's your idea of luxury, then it's luxurious I guess. And the EX is classed as a fighter, but from what I can tell it's very much the same ship. Uh, so please feel free to comment in the comments and tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, but really I think it's just a case of pick the paintwork of your choice. And you know, black is cool. At just over 1.85 million we get the first properly alien ship. The Spear is a manufacturer that makes ships based on alien designs, and the Talon is a craft of Tavaran origin that's left some of us to ponder how the Tavaran lost two wars to the UEE. But maybe it was because they put too much effort into making their ships pretty. So it's got two size 4s and it handles very nicely, particularly in Atmo. Um, I've left the cockpit animation out on purpose because that's one I think you should witness firsthand for the first time. And the Talon Shrike is the missile focused variant of the Talon series, giving up the pew pew for a lot more boom boom. So it's only got two size 1 guns on it, 
uh, but it carries more missiles. And personally I favour the base Talon as a dogfighter, but with the missile operator mode which came in in 314, missile gameplay definitely got an upgrade. Speaking of Boom Boom, the Anvil Gladiator at nearly 2 million credits is the first true bomber of Star Citizen ships. So as well as 8 size 2 missiles, it carries a payload of 4 size 5 torpedoes. They're slower moving but a lot more explosive than missiles. So bombers are really about taking on the larger, slower moving ships like corvettes and capitals. However with 2 size 3s for the pilot, and a turret with another 2 size 3s on top, the Gladiator is maybe one of the most overlooked ships at the moment, particularly given its fairly undemanding price in game. The Vanguard series starts at just over 2 million credits with the Sentinel. The Vanguards all share a weapon configuration with one size 5 hardpoint and four custom size 2 guns centred on the nose of the ship. There's also a turret with two size 2s. These heavy fighters are tanks with decent double size 2 shields and a really good hull HP. So the Sentinel is the e-warfare version with an EMP to disable your enemies. But just be careful with those EMPs because uh, the area of effect damage that they do can get you into trouble with the law pretty easily. The Vanguard Harbinger is the bomber variant of the series, using its internal space to house a payload of three size 5 torpedoes. It's also got a custom turret on the top, which houses a rocket launcher as opposed to the standard guns. And when you can drop that sort of payload onto a large target like an Idris, and still be in the fight in a heavy fighter, that's uh, quite a mean combination. The Hoplite is the dropship version of the Vanguards, with drop seats inside to carry a small squad of four marines. With a lot more FPS combat missions in 315, I'm really looking forward to using one of these to drop in our legionaries at a target, before taking to the sky to provide some aerial cover. If I promise to be good, they might even let me tag along and hang at the back, but I'm not sure they should let me have a gun. And the daddy of the series is the Warden, the original vanguard made for the UE Navy as a long range heavy fighter. The series as a whole has some people scratching their heads as they don't really like the mix of size 5 and size 2 guns under pilot control, but I think as the game expands beyond Stanton, the range that the vanguard can cover with a bigger QT drive and fuel tanks, as well as beds for its crew of two in all variants, is going to make a huge difference how people view these ships. Hello old friend. At 2.1 million you're ready to get into the ship mining game with the Misk Prospector, capable of breaking up asteroids and rocks on planets and extracting the valuable metals inside. If you get used to hitting up that Quantanium, it's basically a mini money printing machine. I also really like the internals of this ship. With a highly functional living area, you can really imagine that you're a plucky go-it-alone miner trying to strike it rich out on the frontier. And now for something completely different. The Kartuwal is a Xi'an inspired fighter, and possibly one of the weirdest, but you know, cool weird, ships in the SC universe. It's got a series of manoeuvrable thrusters rather than big engines which give it a really iconic flight model. It's also a competitor for the coolest landing gear animation in the verse. I really like its folded up insectoid look and how it unfurls into its main flight state. Another one close to my heart is the Aegis Sabre for 2.2 million. This really was my workhorse fighter, although it's taken a bit of a dive in the meta rankings recently. 
Even so, I still really enjoy flying it, and I like the balance between maneuverability and firepower with three size 3 fixed weapons. Although it's been slimmed down to have two size 1 shields, whereas it used to have three, so a little bit less durable nowadays. Still, this is where I do really fall back on the rule of cool. If you enjoy flying a ship, don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't because it's not meta. Just go buy that ship and enjoy it. The Terrapin is probably the premier Pathfinder of SC. So Pathfinders are basically your smaller exploration vehicles before you get into the realms of the proper exploration ships like the Constellation Aquila. It's originally designed as a military scouting vehicle, so it's really heavily armoured and it's got a really cool look with great VTOL capabilities. It's got two control seats in it, although there's some debate over whether it's meant to be a crew of two or one, since you only have one bed. Could be that the pilot's meant to move to the sensor, it could be the military protocol where one person sleeps while the other flies, or you, know, you could just be meant to snuggle. The Banu Defender at 2.8 million has probably drawn a lot more interest since the announcements regarding the much-anticipated BMM's ability to house one in its hangar. It's got a really interesting symmetrical design with two pods for pilot and co-pilot. And the internals here should give you some idea of the aesthetic direction of the merchantman. When I lasted a series like this, it was really convenient that the Constellation series began at just over 3.5 million with the Andromeda, but now we have the Taurus cargo variant at 3.26 million that's been messed up a bit. However, for this kind of money, this is a really interesting proposition. It carries 174 SCU of cargo, which is a really decent amount, and while it sacrifices the snubcraft of the other Connies, it's still a really cool multi-crew ship for trekking across the system. Personally, now feel free to disagree in the comments, the Freelancer Max would still be my stop off on the way to a bigger hauler like the C2 or the Caterpillar. But the Taurus should really inspire a debate on that, and for many of you miners out there, 176 SU might be the perfect amount for those runs to go and sell your Quantanium at the TDD. The Blade is a Spurious go at replicating a Vandal fighter, and you can add one to your hangar for just under 3.4 million credits. It is a beast to fly, and the custom plasma weaponry packs a meaty punch. I love the styling of this ship, it's like the design brief was to make it mean, and then the follow up was, I like it, but can you make it look meaner? It's also got a really cool alien cockpit, particularly if you are very fond of blood red as a colour. And our final ship for under 3.5 million is the Aegis Eclipse Stealth Bomber. If the Gladiator is the first bomber that you come to, then the Eclipse is the first truly scary bomber that you come to, with three size 9 torpedoes and a very low signature. This ship is great for peeping and creeping through the asteroid fields of Yella and taking hammerheads down with a single strike from the shadows. I for one head to this ship as my cup of tea bounty hunter, in that you can solo those ERTs with one hand on the joystick and one hand on the brew. So that's it for episode 2, please get in touch in the comments to let me know which ships are your favourites and what's making its way back into your hangars post wipe. And feel free to have a good debate with others in the comments and in your groups, just remember that just because you don't like a ship doesn't mean that somebody else isn't allowed to. And if you think I've earned it, consider hitting the subscribe button and maybe introducing the channel to your org mates, it goes a really long way and helps me out. But with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.